Hi guys, welcome to this video on React and Next.js and I have created an empty React project and this is the default app.js file which runs on the home route. So the concept that I'll be writing in this React app uh, can be utilized in Next.js as well. So I will talk about some different aspects and the mistakes that beginner developer of React or Next.js can make using states. So I'll talk about mainly the use state hook and at the end i'll talk about use reducer hook and the different variations of it how to update the data if depending upon the kind of data the state contains it can be array objects nested uh, objects array of objects uh, and some primitive types like integer string boolean so uh, before that i've already talked about the use effect hook in detail and in couple of videos i would request you guys if you want to learn in depth understanding and the advanced concepts of use effect uh, check out my other two videos in my playlist of react and uh, so let's start so i'll be first start by creating a new state using a use state hook so i will start off writing a variable so I'm assuming that you already know these concepts uh, and you want to revise it or improve your concepts using it so this variable is the timer it will contain the data and the second variable is the function that is used to update the data of this variable timer okay so I will be giving it like this and let's try to print the timer here so if I refresh the page you can see that it will not print anything on my browser. The reason is that I have not given this timer a default value using this use state hook. So to give the default value, I can give any value to it. It can be primitive types or non primitive types. Uh, so I can give zero. If I save it, you can see that the zero is printed because I have given the default value, right? And now let's create a button. And in this button, I have actually uh, needs to set the new value to this timer. So I'm going to use the arrow function directly inside it. And uh, then I can write the set timer. And here I can give it any value. So I can fetch the value of timer and add it one. So let's try to give it some text to this button. And if I click on timer, you can see that if I keep on clicking, this value is getting increased, right? And uh, this way, if I remove something from here, you will see that uh, it will print uh, nothing as well as if I will try to update this state variable uh, without giving any default value, it will throw an error. So the point i'm trying to say is whenever you create a new variable uh, a state variable then always try to give the default value within this use state hook right so if i try to give any other value to it let's say uh, a string then if i save it if i try to increment uh, you can see that uh, this will consider as a string uh, because the string plus one uh, is automatically gets converted into the string. This is the default behavior of JavaScript uh, plus is used to concatenate different values. Okay, so in order to manipulate this, let's say if it is it was a zero and the zero will be appended to it and one will be uh, appended and concatenated like this, right? So let's now create another variable and uh, in that variable I will be I will try to add some kind of object so first I will try to add a student and then set student use state and let's try to keep it empty so first I will just comment these two lines and uh, I will try to print something like let's try to print student okay so if i refresh you will see that it is not printing anything because again i have not given any default value to it 
so let's say that the student contains multiple properties inside it like the id name phone number address or uh, the courses the student is taking so let's try to give the default value like the student we need to provide the empty key value pairs to it so what do i mean by it let's say uh, if i want to add id equals to zero zero is the default value and the name equals to umair so this is the default value i'm not giving anything to it and uh, now if i try to refresh uh, it still throw an error the reason is that uh, it is an object so in order to fetch the data of it inside so i will write the student dot id directly so if i refresh the page now you can see that the error is gone and i cannot directly print the object over here if i try to remove the object again and empty then if i refresh you will see that this will show an undefined error this is the most common error that almost every new developer makes so if in case we we don't want to update this uh, and add a default value we have to add some error handling to it so the one way to add it is like add a question mark after student so the error is showing that this student uh, does not contain uh, a key with name id so if i refresh now and refresh you will see that the error is gone but it is not printing anything so even if we pass some kind of id name properties to it it is always a good practice to add this question mark after objects so currently we can uh, directly add uh, uh, some objects to it uh, in most of the cases we will be calling an api and get the data of the students from the apis in that case uh, we are not sure sometimes that what property student student contain in that case it is always essential to add this question mark to it okay so there is another way let's say that if i remove question mark it's showing an error because uh, student dot id does not exist so always check if student exists then execute that h1 refresh the page and again i have not added any question mark instead i have added this check and this check as well as the question mark i would recommend you to add both of these checks while uh, accessing the data from uh, objects which you are not sure what values it will contain uh, what are the key value pairs it will contain so this is the check that you can make even if it it is supposed to be an integer or other primitive types as well right so i will further talk about the objects but let me quickly explain you that what what is another variation of use state we can actually uh, return some data from this use state it is not only able to contain some strings or direct values it is able to contain functions as well so i can write arrow function inside it and inside this so let's say i'm returning a string from inside print this timer so now you can see that it has printed timer and this function is working fine as well so i would recommend you guys when you create a function inside the use state hook don't try to like call any api that returns some kind of promise uh, use those api calls directly inside the use effect hook which i have explained in my previous video uh, best practices and the performance of the use effect hook in react go check out that if you want to see the use effect hook so next uh, let's come back to this uh, this state for the string and here i will be creating some object so for creating an object i will write id zero and then i will write name empty and then i will write let's say subjects and subjects contain an array of it can be a values it can be the array of objects so student and h1 and inside it let's try to get subjects okay and then if i try to fetch the initial one index if i further explain this how we can fetch the data and how we can update the data 
we were able to update the data of the primitive types but what about the non primitive types like the objects or the arrays we cannot directly update it like this so in order to update this data so currently you can see that if i refresh and uh, it's printing id and let me print the name so name is empty let me add umair so save and now you can see that this umair is being printed from that object now how can i update this value of this name property using this set student function so in order to update that i'm going to be creating another button this button is going to call the set student uh, get the previous just like this and then it is going to an object and we need to return an object from it because this contains an object so for returning an object i will first gather the what is the previous and default value of it and we can use the spread operator for that so if you don't know what is spread operator i've already created an an extensive video on spread operator and its variation go check out the javascript playlist on my channel and you can learn more about the spread operator and once we get the whole data we can then uh, add the property to it so let's say i want to add this new property so if i save it and uh, its name is has to be update name let's save refresh and now if i update name you will see that this is has been updated okay and you can see this is being printed from here student dot name it means that this the object property name and its value has been updated and this is the better practice to update the values of the string and when we perform such kind of complex operation i would suggest you to write a separate function in order to do it so to what do i mean by that so const update name equals to this and uh, i'm going to copy and paste everything which is written over here okay and uh, in my on click function i'm directly going to write update name so it will work as it as before so if i refresh update name you can see that it is working as it is so it's about the use state now i want to tell you about the difference between uh, what problems we can have if we directly write like this the timer plus one over here it was doing the same thing and the new line it will do the same thing but what are the drawbacks of previous variant the timer plus one so i will show you by writing two functions and uh, in those functions i will be updating this state so i'm going to create a function const ink and then the arrow function and i have set the reference of ink to it so when we click on this button uh, this function will be called right so let's say i want to call this function uh, and i want to set the timer so timer is equal to timer plus one and let's try to click on the this and first i need to give the default value let's save it and uh, if i keep on clicking it works perfectly right but there is a problem if we have another function or some other resource that is updating the same variable so if we try to update it like this it will cause some problem so let me try to elaborate you so if i create another button and uh, it's also going to increment uh, to increment to and i'm going to create another function and i'm going to put this set timer inside a set interval and uh, i'm going to give it some time of five seconds that after five seconds this state needs to be updated and now you can see that we have the value zero which is the default value of the state and the two buttons first one will increment it by one the second one will increment it by one but after the five seconds so 
I put it in the set interval. So if I change the value using ink, the first button, I've changed it to five. And uh, if I click on the ink to, uh, I'll wait for five seconds. I have clicked and before it changes its value, I change its value to 10. So you can see that when the set interval finalized its value, uh, it actually, uh, rather than changing it to 11, it changed it to six. So the previous value of timer was not triggered. So let's try to um, run it again. So if I change its value to let's say 15, I click on uh, and you can see that it has again changed its value to six. And if I click on ink two and this, and it has changed it to six and then seven. So there is a some problem. So to resolve it again that I showed you, we can write the previous value arrow previous plus one. So whoever is going to update this state, it's going to take the updated value like this if we write this syntax. So I will copy it and I will paste it. So if I save it and refresh and now if I click on this to five, I click on the ink two and I change its value to 10 and it should be 11 now. So you can see it is 11. So it has taken the updated value of the previous uh, increment function. Okay. So it is now um, updating uh, these values after every uh, five seconds. So that because we have written it in the interval. Okay. So I can actually uh, keep on incrementing it and uh, it will update it from wherever I stop from the button one. So it is not keeping it separate value states and uh, it, these values are synced with each other. So that was it for the use state. Uh, next, I'll talk about use reducer. So use reducer hook is very important in React when we have a complex logic and large number of data in a state variable. Let's say the hundreds of objects and nested objects. We have a large number of arrays. Then we prefer to use use reducer hook rather than this use state hook because uh, use reducer hook provide uh, some uh, centralized state updates and uh, it handles them through a reducer function. Okay, so there is a practical example for that but in this video it will get a longer but i will be showing you what are the different uh, functions pre-built keywords that we can use to uh, run the use reducer hook and utilize it uh, in various ways so first of all i need to import the use reducer hook along with the uh, use state so then first of all i need to initialize an initial state uh, usually when we need to initialize an initial state, uh, we remember the response type from the API, but currently we don't have any API. So let's create an initial state outside this uh, app component. We can create initial state directly inside it, but we can create outside as well. So initial state. And uh, let's say a result zero. So I'm going to be giving you an example of the calculator like uh, we will be passing uh, some uh, a previous result and a new payload. And uh, we'll be performing addition, subtraction, multiplication and division examples in it. Right. So in the app component, uh, what I can do, first of all, I can create another function and uh, I'm going to call it a reducer function. So const reducer equals to and this function is going to contain the data and we call it state and the second function uh, second parameter is going to be called action action mainly contains uh, what need what operation needs to be performed so in our calculator application we have multiple operations that needs to be performed which is add subtract multiply divide and can be more right so inside it, we can write if else conditions or if we can write uh, switch statements. So uh, I'll be showing you the switch statements in this. So before writing anything inside it, let's come to our app component and uh, inside it first, I will create a use reducer hook. So I will be writing state and then dispatch because use reducer function return us these two 
uh, variables. So now use reducer and inside it, I need to pass the function which I have created and then I need to pass the initial state. Okay, and uh, in return, I can actually print few things. So let's say I have H2 and uh, the title is calculator. And let's try to print the result here. So result and uh, result can be the state dot result. Okay because this is the state variable and i'm utilizing this state variable and i have given the initial state to it and initial state contains the variable result which is the key so this is uh, how i can get the uh, value through this use reducer function but after that i'm going to create few buttons and uh, on click this patch function which i have added over here and dispatch function is responsible for calling this reducer function internally okay we don't need to let it know that just call the reducer function because we have already given this reducer function over here so then the dispatch function will be taking an object so it is a function and it's going to take an object because the initial state is an object and then we need to give it a action type so the first type let's say is add and the second type payload colon and payload can be any integer value so let's say first i'm going to give five okay uh, this type uh, add has to be i need to write it like this because this type has to be uh, used by this action and after that i can give add five to this button and I'm going to copy this four times because I want to write it for the subtraction, a multiplication and the division. So I can write subtract and anything like two. It has to be multiply and it has to be divide. Okay, uh, we can have the different values to it. Let's say two and we have passed the three and then we have passed the four which is written on these buttons, right? So this is it. And now the last thing we need to do is the use reducer hook. So inside it, I can write switch statement and the switch statement, if you remember from the programming fundamentals in other languages as well, uh, we can utilize it and we can check if the action type, uh, what, what would be the value of action type? So case and the value of action type, if it is add, then what we need to return, we can return any object from it. And we can have the complex calculations inside it, but since we only have to add the values, uh, we can keep it in one line. So I can write result state dot result plus action dot payload. Okay and uh, then first let me add a default statement to it so default means that if the action dot type does not contain any of these four values add subtract multiply and divide so it is going to return a simple state we don't need to update that so that's why it was showing some kind of warning so i'm going to copy this case so I have pasted it again and again, and I have changed the action type to it. And I've also changed the operator over here based upon the case. So I think we are done with it and it will not throw any error. So on the browser, you can see that we have the calculator and initial result is zero because we passed it a value zero. Then we have the button. And now we want to add five to this previous value. So add five, you can see that the five is added. Now we want to sub multiply by three to this value. Multiply by three, it is becoming 15 and we want to divide it by two. So 15 minus two equal to 13, it works well. And this divided by four and it is working fine. And we can keep on multiplying the previous values. And uh, the same state is being updated based upon the different conditions. 
so this is the benefit of using use reducer that we can have any number of conditions to handle and manage single state variable but it is quite hard to actually use maintain it using the use state hook right so this was the basic example and a simple example for using the use reducer hook and in upcoming videos i will be creating some big application maybe the full stack applications in Next.js and I'll be utilizing all these concepts and I'll also be creating more on the react hooks like the use context, uh, use callback hook, use context hook, use memo, use ref and I'll be giving you some examples why, when and where we need to use those hooks. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe my channel and see you in the next video.